20 years ago today, the HBO miniseries Band of Brothers premiered, gripping audiences with the true story of World War II's 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment. Just two days later, a terror attack would plunge America into war once again. Now, the actors and creators are reuniting to reflect on the impact of the series for HBO's Band of Brothers podcast. Joining us now, the host of the Band of Brothers podcast, Roger Benefit, and actor Ron Livingston, who portrayed Captain Lewis Nixon III in the miniseries. Tell you one thing about the crowds. They shall sure clean up good. Yeah. All he needs a little Mozart. Beethoven. Sorry, sir. That's not Mozart. That's Beethoven. Just uh, wow! Incredible! Uh, it's so, so great! To, so great to have you guys, <laughs> Ron. I'm I'm sort of stammering here because um, for people that weren't around at the time, who may have been too young, um, I drove around in the days after 9/11, watching Band of Brothers, getting the soundtrack, listening to it over and over. It was just this extraordinary moment in time that I just can't put into words, but you talk to people who watch Band of Brothers those weeks after 9-11, and it really resonated. Talk about that and talk about what it meant to you to be a part of this extraordinary moment in, in America. Well, we, uh, our first episodes aired on September 9th. Uh, so, and we had a watch party. A bunch of the guys got together to uh, watch it together. And that's the last event, that's the last pre-9-11 event that I remember. Um, it's sort of after that moment, everything changed. And uh, I, I think the show, it just went kind of hand in hand with what was going on. It, and it still is. 20 years later, uh, you know, we're getting out of the war that began shortly after the show aired. And uh, I, I think there's a lot of parallels to it. Um, and it, it, it's to me also really caught up in, in that time. Yeah, and uh, Roger Bennett, um, t tell me about this podcast and why you decided uh, to, to do this. I adore Band of Brothers. You know, watching it for the first time with my own eyes, September 9th, 2001, it represented everything that's great about America that I grew up with, just a show filled with empathy, courage, everyday heroism, global leadership, the follow me ethos, with which I've always associated America. And I read last summer that in June 2020, there were approximately 300,000 Second World War veterans still alive. But by June 2021, that number had dwindled to just 100,000. The youngest now are in their late 90s. And when you read those numbers, it becomes clear, Joe, why the Band of Brothers story becomes both more important and ever more popular year on year. More and more young people find this story on HBO because it's the remarkable men who fought it are no longer alive to pay witness, to tell their stories themselves. And I think it's unfathomable to imagine what would happen if their narrative fades from our national consciousness. You know, Roger, uh, I watch Band of Brothers every year. Uh, the complete the complete episodes, all of them. And this year, as I just finished watching it about two weeks ago, given the poison of our politics today, it strikes me that Band of Brothers, the podcast, the series itself, might cause some people to reflect on the fact that the United States of America is a force for good. Yeah, I, I mean, I defer to Ron. There's a reason the Band of Brothers is so remarkable. And, and, and in interviewing him in episode one and Tom Hanks in the epilogue of the podcast, these actors, these creators dedicated themselves to authenticity, to honoring the truth of the stories of the Second World War. You know, I grew up with my grandfather. He was a desert rat 
uh, into Brooke. He wouldn't talk about his experiences. He'd just say, thank God the Americans came in and saved us. And much of the telling was the guns of Navarone, the dirty dozen. It was the John Wayneification. And Ron and the Band of Brothers crew, they stripped away the, the kind of mythologizing. And in the first episode, um, Tom Hanks said to me, anyone seeing this for the first time needs to say, this is not a celebration of nostalgia. This is an examination of the human condition. He wants people to ask themselves, what do you think? What would you do? And it's really Ron and the cast, their truth telling. I mean, the, the sacrifice you went through, Ron, to really bring Lewis Nixon truly to stage, that's what's incredible about this show. <laughs> Well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, and talking about Band of Brothers, I very, I very rarely refer to my sacrifice because I, I didn't really sacrifice. It was a <laughs> huge opportunity to me. It was an honor to be a part of. Um, to, uh, you know, to speak to your point, uh, I think you can phrase it another way. You know, uh, America is a force for good. The people, I, I, I would phrase it this way. The people of America can do just about anything when they pull together. Um, the story of Band of Brothers would be very different if half the country was against it. And when the rations came out and, and, uh, and when it was time to enlist, uh, you know, half the country said, no, we're not doing that. Um, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same story. Um, so to me, that's really what I take away from it. The idea of a Band of Brothers, a group of people that are, are, are pulling together and operating in a way that individuals just can't. Hey, Ron, it's Willie Hi. Geist. I, I'm curious of, um, about your connections to the events of, of World War II in, in Europe and what you knew about it beforehand, before you stepped into this project, because you've got a great book to base it on, Stephen Ambrose's book. You've got Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg driving it. But until you speak to the men who were on those beaches and the men who pushed into Europe over all of those months, it doesn't really you can't fully accept the gravity of the enterprise they undertook, how unlikely success felt at many times, and the sacrifices, you say, that they made so that the world, frankly, could be saved. You know, my, my, uh, my mom's dad uh, was a survivor of the Bataan Death March. Um, he was spent the, pretty much the duration of the war as a POW in the uh, Philippines and then Japan. And that was probably the extent of my knowledge of the of the direct experience of the war. And even that, he just never talked about it uh, until Band of Brothers came out. And I think in our family, that's one of the great gifts of it was it, it sparked uh, the possibility of a conversation. And I've heard that time and time again from uh, children of veterans of World War II that say, you know, when that show came on, my dad, who for for 40, 50, 60 years had never had never brought it up. Wouldn't wouldn't go there. All of a sudden, he felt he felt like he could tell his story. Yeah, you know, uh, Roger, mm -hmm. there were moments uh, back when I first saw this in 2001. There were moments when Mika and I were watching it um, uh, about a year ago uh, that I dissolved just dissolved into tears. Uh, and and in part, uh, it was because. It was in the two-dimensional war story. You had, of course, uh, the character Ron played, Nixon, uh, a guy who was tortured, other men uh, who fought the war, who got, you know, turned, the, the war turned them into ghosts. Uh, you had the, uh, the complicated story of Spear, uh, who had one of the more uh, heroic moments in the entire movie. Um, it was, it was very, it was a very three-dimensional look at war, not the glorification of war, uh, but showed uh, all sides. Yeah, we, we've got Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg to thank for that. They dedicated um, themselves to creating Saving Private Ryan and then realized that was not enough, that they wanted a return to this theme over and over to dedicate a huge amount of their creative bandwidth uh, to bring in the authentic stories, these true stories, stripping away uh, the mythology. And like you and like Barnacle, like thousands across America, I watch Band of Brothers on an annual basis, ritually, to reimmerse myself. I notice a new detail 
every single time, mm. a new depth, a new story, a new line. And for me also, Joe, the most powerful Band of Brothers viewing I've had came last year, back in April, in the early days of COVID, when the pandemic was swirling across Manhattan and paralyzing the world. And I was trapped in my apartment. And I took my 10-year-old kid, my youngest kid, Oz, and every night I introduced him to Band of Brothers. We watched episode after episode. And it was true what you said, against the chaos of our reality, our present day reality, to immerse ourselves in a different idea of America. The idea that I grew up with, to be honest, of self-sacrifice, of everyday heroism. These men did incredible things. They survived the hellscape. And then many of them went back and just became taxi drivers, janitors, just everyday men, as Ron said, didn't talk about it. And as Tom Hanks says in the opening episode of the podcast, there are moments in history in which impossible things, unimaginable things have come to pass because like-minded people decided to get together and make it so. And that is the magic of the Easy Company story. And like your father and like so many people, so many heroes at the end, uh, when Dick Winters looks into the camera uh, and is asked if he's a hero and he says uh, the heroes uh, were the the men that didn't come back. Um, it just, again, uh, it's just so true to life and so moving. I guess the, the final question we have, Roger, is when are you going to do a 12-part podcast series on office space? That's what Willie and I really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got to say, listen, listen to Ron's episode, the first episode of this podcast, okay. and you will just see an, an actor with, with incredible range. To be able to do both of those things, God, no. all hail Ron Livingston. Uh, just an American original. <laughs> exactly. Incredible. <laughs> The Band of Brothers podcast is out today. Ron Livingston and Roger Bennett. Thank you both so great. very, very thanks, much. Guys. We really look forward to it. Thank you, guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.